yes guys welcome back to the spurs talk show how are you hope you're all happy and healthy doing the things you love it's sunday it's game day for some not for us tottenham have to wait again to be the last fixture of the game week weekend tottenham chelsea tomorrow night under the lights at the stadium we are going to be talking all about it Plus a little bit of a review of what happened thus far this weekend right now. Before we get into it, please smash the like button for me, like you always do. Hit the subscribe button on the channel if you haven't already. We're nearly at 20k. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic. And guys, like I say, we have the opportunity to extend our lead over Arsenal after they were on the receiving end of a 1-0 loss to Newcastle at St. James's Park Saturday night football. A game marred in controversy. Any two ways about it. If you're an Arsenal fan, you're easily justified in feeling like VAR has screwed you again. But look, Arsenal didn't deserve the win. So when I see crybaby Arteta suggesting that VAR has cost them three points, I think he's talking nonsense. At best, he cost you a point. They cost you a point. But I do think that there was a foul. I think the, the four reasons why uh, the goal shouldn't have stood is actually really one. I think that the, the, the ball being out, I think it's too difficult to tell. And according to being sports, you know, their, their technology said it was still in. Um, the, the shove in the back was probably the strongest call. I think that that was looked like a, looked like a foul. The offside, I don't think it was because it, the ball technically looked like it went backwards to me. But again, you couldn't confirm it either way. So on-field decision has to stand. And the handball is from the, I think it hit, was it Callum Wilson's arm? To me, it looked like it was probably just on the kind of bicep area. But if it's an accidental handball and it doesn't go straight into the back of the net or it's not the player who handles the ball that scores, if it goes to another player, then it's, it, it doesn't count. I think that's the new rule of 2023-24. So three of the reasons why Arsenal fans think it shouldn't have counted, I disagree with. But one of them, the shove, I do think, look, if you were an Arsenal fan, you'd be furious. But at the end of the day, Arsenal didn't deserve to win. Newcastle weren't spectacular either. It wasn't a great game, but I don't really know how to feel as a Tottenham fan whether you're happy that Arsenal dropped the points because it's extending our lead over them, but Newcastle getting three points, kind of bringing them back into the race for the Champions League when there was a little bit of a gap emerging. It's, uh, it's all very interesting. I'm not sure how to feel. Let me know how you feel. With regards to Manchester United, they were absolutely awful once again. And you know what? I kind of take my hat off them to a little bit because, I, sorry, I t t kind of take my hat off for them, to them, a little bit. Yeah, that did make sense. In just as much as they've played terribly all year, they haven't deserved to win 75% of the games that they have won. They've won six and lost five of the 11 they played, and they find themselves in eighth place. And they're only about eight points behind us. You know, so it's... It's interesting how bad they can be and yet still find a way to get it done. <sighs> Again, I don't really feel like they're a massive threat. I think that eventually the bad form will catch up and they won't continue to find a way to get it done all year. Um, and also, I think that with Eric Ten Hag at the helm, I don't think they're ever going to be good enough. I just don't see the value in the manager anymore. And so, on that basis, the longer that they win one, lose one, win one, lose one, the longer rope he'll be given and the extension of the lack of threat I think they'll become. So I'm okay with it. Manchester City breezed past Bournemouth very easily. That Doku looks like a brilliant player, doesn't he? Absolutely sensational. And uh, we'll wait and see what Liverpool and Aston Villa do today. Liverpool have got Luton, Aston Villa have got Forest, I think. Um, both away games. So I don't know. We'll wait and see. I'm expecting three points for both of them. When it's over to Tottenham to play Chelsea, guys. And for me, look, I've been saying it all week. I think that it's a Tottenham victory. As long as Destiny Doggy is in the starting eleven, it should be really comfortable. But without him, and the injury news suggests that we've got 
gaps all the way down our left hand side. Ben Davies is a doubt. Udogi's a doubt. Brennan um, Perisic and Manuel Solomon are all out. So all of the players that are natural left footers and natural left sided players are out. And we're going to have to shoehorn in right footers to who are going to be more naturally inclined to, to cut in, leading to an imbalance in the squad. If Emerson Royale has to start on the left and either Ren uh, Brennan Johnson or Richarlison start on the left as well, then to me it's you're going to have to see a lot of fluidity and dynamism within the, the other areas of the pitch to make up for it. You're going to have to see Sonny maybe drop out to the left at times. You're going to have to see Madison, who's definitely you know accomplished with his left foot, fill into that gap as you naturally see these right footers want to cut inside and so there's a little bit of a concern there for me that our left is a little bit threadbare if we doggies out when you think about the Chelsea team where are they going to be strongest well if Mudrik is out then I think that Raheem Sterling down there right he's obviously a threat running at Emerson Royale if Mudrik is fit then him running at Pedro Porro is also going to be interesting I'm not so worried about Nico Jackson I personally do think there's a player in Nico Jackson but he hasn't shown it in the nine for Chelsea yet the midfield for Chelsea on paper is up there with the best in the league, but on the pitch it hasn't proven to be that far or that, that so far. Caicedo, Enzo and Gallagher. At the moment, Gallagher is the linchpin in that three, which is surprising when you say that out loud, but it's just the way it's been. But I think Tottenham's midfield, you know, we'll have enough about it. It should be a full strength midfield. Bissouma, although he's still going to have that yellow card. Um, one, one yellow card away from missing the Wolves game over his head. So is that going to take his um, mind off of the performance or distract him a little bit? I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. But ahead of him, you've got Pape Sar, who will have to get back and help out Pedro Porro if Mudrik is playing. And obviously Madison pulling the strings. At the top end of the pitch for Tottenham, I feel like, you know, you've, as I say, you, if Richarlison, if, if Destiny Udoggy's fit, and I think you can make the call to play Brennan Johnson on the left and Kulisevsky on the right. If Emerson Royale has to play or Ben Davies, then I think you'd have to make the argument that you might need a little bit more defensive support from the left inside forward. And so you probably would have to play Richarlison and on that basis or Kulisevsky. I'd love to see Kulisevsky on the left, but I just don't think that's going to happen. But on that basis, if you play Richarlison on the left, then you can make the argument to rotate uh, Kulisevsky out, uh, Kulisevsky out, and bring in uh, Brennan Johnson, and, and then have Becky to come off the bench in the 65th minute if Tottenham were two 0 up to kind of shore up the game, shore up the the attack, and give us a fresh leg outlet. Um, I'm expecting big things from Sonny. I think the game itself is going to be brilliant, guys. The pressure of the environment. When you look at the statistics of the game, historically, it's all about Chelsea. I think. Our 2 0 victory against them last season at home broke an eight game non winning streak for Tottenham, uh, where Chelsea had dominated us. I also think, from what I've seen, that there's no team that scored more goals at the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium than Chelsea. I think that they've. I think they're the team that's won the most at the new Tottenham Stadium of any that's come here in all competitions. And, you know, we've got a really sketchy record against Chelsea historically but that's those days that voodoo was broken you hope last season when we beat them 2-0 at home and we didn't lose away from home it was a 2-2 draw last season one of the earliest I think it was the first game of the season um, and Chelsea if you look at Chelsea's current statistics current form then you'll see a different side I think they are I think there's only two teams in the Premier League that have lost more games in 2023 than Chelsea relegation fodder um you know, they can't find out their best 11. And they're a team in transition. They've got lots of injuries. I think they've lost five of their last seven London derbies. I believe that stat is true. I saw that earlier. So, like, the kind of the historical track record would say, don't bet against Chelsea. The, the kind of present tense form-wise would say, put your money on Tottenham. But I think that, for me, my confidence goes up tenfold if... Destiny Doggies in that team and, and provides the balance to the system, to the structure and to the fluidity of the game. If he's not and you have to shoehorn in right footers, then uh, because of our injury list that's all left-sided players, then I get 
I get a little bit dampened in my confidence. I was wondering how you guys feel about that. I'll tell you what, like someone like you know Cole Palmer, he's, he's dangerous everywhere. I don't know where they're going to kind of squeeze him in. Um, is it going to be Palmer at the on the right, Sterling on the left? But they have options whether or not Mudrik is available. He is apparently fully fit or at least in full in full training this week. You know, Reese James is back as well. Wonderful, one of the best right backs in the world when he's playing on form. And you know, something that is a terrifying prospect, him running down the right along with Sterling. As I say, if you've only got Richarlison and Emerson Royale, then if you're Pochettino, that's where you send your traffic. And I think that that's why, for me, having Destiny Doggy is so, so critically important. I really hope that when when Ange was saying it's a 50-50 call, he's got some ankle issues, I was hope, I was hoping that that was just gamesmanship, trying to throw you know, the, uh, the scent off and that actually he's going to start. But as the week's gone on, I've, I've seen on Twitter lots of stories that actually, no, he is struggling with an ankle ligament issue and he is 50-50 at best, but, you know, maybe not even that. So not, uh, not, not great, not great. Listen, I'll, I'll, make, I'll still make the same call. If Tottenham have a fully fit Blue Doggy playing, then... The only absentees we'll have are Manuel Solomon and Perisic and possibly Ben Davies as a bench option. On that basis, I think the top will just be too strong under the lights with the with the crowd right behind it. By the way, I'm going to the game. If you're going to, reach out to me if you want to get onto the fan cams. You know where we'll be outside the South Stand immediately after the game. But then if there's a there's more demand to fulfil for fan cams than the stadium of opening hours will allow for, then we'll move down outside the club shop. So... Um, make sure you come over and say hello. We'll try and get everybody on. Um, but yeah, like, I think that if if Chelsea play their best football, and their best football has been played against teams that want to play against them, but then so have Tottenham's. So I don't know. I feel like I'm easing up my prediction. I did say four 0 to Tottenham. I think maybe that's a little bit um, a little bit too overconfident, too obnoxious. And with the noise about Udogi, I think I'm going to say, regardless, I think Tottenham will win by two goals. 2-0, 3-1, something like that. But if your doggy's in, it will be comfortable. If your doggy's not in, it will be a very close game. But I think it's going to be a brilliant game. One of those games that where, uh, you know, it's going to be on the edge of your seats wherever you're watching it. And uh, I can't wait, guys. I cannot wait. So I'm going to leave it there. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Also, guys, get over to Shameless Football. I know I've been plugging uh, Shameless Football and we then we didn't we weren't doing any videos on it, but we've been doing loads of videos this week on Shameless Football. So if you haven't already, then you'll see the link in the description for Shameless Football. Also, if you're playing in FPL Fantasy Premier League, then join the uh, the Shameless Football link, which will be in the description of any of the Shameless videos on Shameless Football. Um, let me know your thoughts, guys, on the game. Who would you play, Brennan Johnson? Does he start, and if so, where? Does it depend on who Doggy's fitness? Any other notable thoughts? Let me know, guys. I'll let you go. Enjoy your Sunday. Oh, also, don't forget, tonight, 7.30, uh, we are doing Tottenham Takes back on the channel here. Hopefully, I'm going to get the crew back together. I haven't heard from them yet, but I'm hoping it's all good. Uh, so, Spurs Talk Show, 7.30, UK time tonight. And I'll see you tomorrow at the game. But like, subscribe, and comment, and all that jazz. As always, guys, bye-bye.